So uh, today we are going to discuss about point number 10 of chapter number 1 that is brick beads and bones. Right? So we, today we are going to discuss about uh, discovery the Harappan civilization. So in last videos we discussed about this uh, town planning of Harappan culture, we discussed about seal, we discussed about weed, we discussed about this creep and then town planning, long distance trade, crop production. So we discussed about many stories related to Indus Valley civilization. Right? But there is another interest, interesting story uh, about the discovery of Harappan culture. So today we are going to discuss about the discovery of Harappan civilization. Now, you must heard about this story uh, around uh, 1800, 1850s, right? Uh, when the British were lying railway track between this uh, Multan to Lahore. What they did? They need lots of bricks. So they. Uh, when they find when they when they start searching for the bricks, they found lots of you know, ready-made bricks were there in Harappa area. So they used thousands of bricks to make this railway train. Right? At that time, the, the English the, the, the person who are making this railway ride, they even don't know about the importance of that bricks. Right? They, 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 they have no idea about industrial civilization. On that, the people living nearby these vicinities, they also you know rope the brick from this area, Harappa. So through that way, Harappan culture, you know, uh, through that way they, they get the bricks and they take all the bricks, right? So at that time, people don't know about these kind of civilizations what happened there, right? So today we are going to learn about this, how the discovery was happened. Now see, first, as I told you in the last class, when the decline of industrial civilization, right? When, when Harappa started decline from uh, 1800 BC, and around 1500 BC, People have almost forget about the, one of the massive or, or this beautiful civilization that once happened. So when they start forget about this, what happened? And, and many thousands of years later, right? People begin to live in this area where this civilization happened. See, when Harappan culture declined, people slowly forget all about that, about the Indus Valley civilization. And later, what happened? Many people became to live in that area millennia later. Millennia means uh, plural of millennium, a thousand years, right? So uh, when the decline happened, everything happened. Now almost like if I give ex this uh, approximate date, around uh, six or seven hundred BC, people start living in this area where the Harappan culture happened. Here is the long time cycle, right? So what happened? Interesting thing about here is those people living in this area, they came across or they saw a different kind of artifact which they don't have any idea about. See, people don't know about a strange artifact. Strange means something, you know, unique, right? Artifact means, as I told you, right, the things that were made up of, you know, human being, like anything. Surface by the flood. It came up, surface by the flood, soil erosion, or turning of white plowing. People do agriculture when they, turn, when they do the plowing. These kind of artifacts were, you know, surfaced, and or digging of treasure. So when the, some people tried to dig or hunt the treasure, they found different kind of artifact belong to Harappan culture. But at that time, people don't know about the importance of that, you know, artifact because uh, they have almost forget about that uh, this uh, wonderful civilization we have right, during that time. And later on. Then we know about the Indus Valley civilization. And during that time, people don't know about it. And when they got this kind of strange artifact, they know it's beautiful, but they don't know from where, from where this came from, who belongs to who, right? Which date? They even don't know about it. Then in this chapter, inside this topic, we are going to about the Cunningham confusion, right? It's within the discovery itself. Now, Cunningham discovered uh, Confucian. Cunningham actually is an archaeologist, right? Uh, who's very popular uh, in Indian history. Now, his full name is Alexander Cunningham, but in your textbook, it's only written Cunningham. Right? Why Cunningham written Confucian? So we are going to learn it over here. Now, first, one important question, one more question, which is repeatedly asked in your exam, is that mm, who is the father of Indian archaeology? So your answer would be. He's a Cunningham, right? So your answer would be Alexander Cunningham or Cunningham is the father of Indian archaeology. One marks question, right? So known as Cunningham, also known as father of Indian archaeologist, right? Now 
He became the first governor, uh, director general of ASI, Archaeological Survey of India. Right? What is the work of ASI, Archaeological Survey of India? The, the work of uh, ASI is to look after the, all the monuments, right? ancient monuments, temples, right? and many other these historical places. They take care about this and they look after, they're taking care of those area have something to do with the importance about the story behind that, so their work. So he became the first director general of ASI, which was established in uh, 1861. So he became first uh, director general, and he started excavating the area, right? start uh, finding out about the past. Now, to, uh, the interesting things during that time is all the archaeologists, all the historians, uh, the source that they use to excavate this written text or inscription. See, archaeologists prefer to use text and inscription for investigation. Now, if they want to do the excavation, so at that time, during that time, 19th century, most of the archaeologists you know, find about the text by looking at the text, then they do the excavation. Right? But mm -hmm. through the help of uh, text and inscription, they do the investigation. Right? Now, here, the interesting things about Alexander Cunningham is his main interest now, you need to note this point, his main interest was in the, uh, in the early history of circa 600, B, 600 BCE to 4th century CE. Now, here you need to understand this. Alexander Cunningham, right, uh, his main interest or the time frame that he wanted to study, right, that he wanted to know about is between 600 BC to 4th century CE, or you can say 600 BC to 4th century AD, that same. Right? Now he, his main interest, or he wants to know about the what happened between these era, and he, or he his main interest faces this. Now, for that, what he used, he used a text written by Hun Sen. You know about Hun Sen, right? He's a Chinese pilgrimage, right? Uh, who came to India to, uh, to find about the Buddhist text around 4th century to 7th century AD, see? He used an account with a book or text left by Chinese Buddhist pilgrims who visited India between 4th to 7th century BC. And his name is Hun Sen. Hun Sen. Uh, there's one movie on his journey to the West. Right? Even we uh, know about this Piu Papa, like this you, Most of you have, you know, uh, Watch that movie, right? Monkey King. We call it Tansen Lama, Piu Papa, right? In this, this story is revolved around his, you know, journey to India. So, Alexander Cunningham used the text, you know, left by Hun Sen to study about uh, Indian history. That that is between 600 BC to 4th century uh, AD, right? Now the problem here is the problem here is. What Alexander did, now, now that, that is his confusion. Now we come to the, what, why con, Alexander confusion. Right? The confusion here is, Alexander know about Harappan seal. See, now point here is, Alexander Cunningham received a seal. One Englishman gave him a Harappan seal. Even he made a sketch of it. See, in your textbook, that these pictures were there. Even he made this sketch of Harappan seal. He got the Harappan seal. Now, now he received her up and seal. But the problem here is he don't know exactly date of it because uh, he followed the text of uh, Hun Sen, right? But the Hun Sen, uh, the text is between the fourth century to this and uh, your seventh century AD, right? And on that Hun Sen, which is almost part of India, right? Uh, even he visited most of the Buddhist sites. Even he stayed in Nalanda, right, for many years, and he uh, learned many Buddhist doctrines from the different ancient masters. But the road map or Hun Sen never visit uh, this Pakistan area. So how could Hun in the Hun Sen book uh, there's uh, this topic about the Harappa? So he received a seal, but he don't know where to exactly put this in the time frame because his time frame is between 600 BC to uh, 400 AD, right? Uh, for, for, for century AD. Now Harappa is far more older than far more older than this, right? So that's why. Uh, he got confusion. So let's see, Cunningham know that Harappan seal, but unsuccessfully tied to place it within the time frame that he was interested. That is between uh, 600 BC to 4th century AD. 
because he thought that Indian history began with the first city in the Ganga Valley. See, you must have heard about this. In 6th century, more, not only Cunningham, uh, many historians at that time think that Indian history starts from 6th century from the Ganga, about the Mahajana Pratasana, Kuru, Panjara, Taksali, Tosali, these are the different, where the Mahabharata used to happen in Kuru, all this area in 6th century BC. Many of the uh, archaeologists of history during that time think that Indian history started during that you know, time. But it's not exactly the truth, right? Indian history is far more older than that. But he had no idea about it. So that's why, because he thought that Indian history began with the first city in the Ganga, that is 600 BC. So that's why he got confused where to put this uh, Raban seal. And because of that, like many other historians, he also missed the significant or importance of Harappan civilization. So that is his confusion. Understood? Understood? Okay, fine. Now, within this discovery, we're going to look after new old civilization. Now, the topic itself gives you a little bit, you know, idea about it. A new old civilization. Now, see, a new means, why it's called new? Because it was discovered, right? Discovered. Fine again. Why it's old civilization? Because itself is old. So, um, discovery means what? Something that's you know, out there, and, uh, then we find it once again. So, that, that's what we call discovery. Uh, opposite is invasion, right? Invention. Now, see, in 1921, now we, we are going near to the you know, discovery of Harappan civilization. So, you need to uh, pay a little bit attention. Seals were discovered at Harappan by archaeologist Dayaram Sani. See, he's a very noted, uh, very noted archaeologist. Of India at the time. What he did, he did excavation in Harappa, right? So what he found, he found the seal of Indus Valley civilization in Harappa. And the date here is 1921. In your textbook, it's not given, right? In 1921, he discovered Harappa, where he got a seal, and he uh, got, after lots of research, he know that, you know, Indus Valley civilization is far more older than what we think. It is far more older than 600 BC. At the same, in the next year, in 1922, another Indian archaeologist, uh, Rakhil Das Benarji, R.D. Benarji, he also found a similar seal that you, that earlier uh, found by Dalit, the Dara of Sani in Harappa. He found another seal in Mohenjo Daro. And that looked like the same. What Dara, Dara of Sani found and what uh, this R.D. Benarji found, a seal is a seal, not only seal, there are many other items. It are matched together between the, um, the what they found in uh, Mahabharata and what they found in Harappa, right? So they, you know, they, 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 they were a little bit shocked about it. So with the help of he is the, uh, this uh, Adi Benarji, sorry. Then with the help of this uh, John Marshall during that time he was in this uh, the um, director general of Archaeology Survey of India. So the three of them discussed, so you know. Uh, deeply about this uh, find and, and finally in 1924 John Marshall was director general of ASI he is during that time he is the governor the, the, the director general of Army Survey of India what he did he first he was the first person or scholar to announce in this valley to the world in 1924 so through that way in 1924 ho ho almost all the world know that there was a very you know urban civilization very massive, you know, very popular civilization happened in India. Before, there were no any question about industrial civilization. People only know about Egypt civilization, Mesopotamia civilization, and then China civilization. In 1924, all around the world, you know, get a new information about the civilization that was far more advanced than other civilization happened in India in uh, more than uh, 46,000 BC. More than 4,600 BC, I'm sorry. So, through that way, the discovery of Indus Valley really happened. Now, the problem here is what he did. He was very, you know, expert in uh, this excavation. Uh, even he was, you know, a little bit, you know, this uh, experienced uh, archaeologist, I would say. He was the first professional archaeologist to work in India. Right? Professional. But the mistake that he done during that time, at that time people don't know about it, but the mistake that he done was he excavate means, excavate means to dig, right? To dig on a horizontal unit. Horizontal means street unit, right? And ignore stratigraphy of the site. 
Stratigraphy means a, uh, is a branch, uh, is a study in the geography, study about the layer of the rock or layer of the soil, just like here, stratigraphy. See, suppose if you want to, you know, uh, do some research about the finite, you know, you need to look at the stratigraphy. See, deeper the uh, artifact, it's more older, right? But what he did, he excavated in a horizontal state way. Through that way, many you know, significant. As a result, valuable information about the Harappan was lost because uh, suppose, okay, let me give you an example. One pot, we found one pot over here, you know, we, we found one pot a little bit below this area. But what he did, he digged in a horizontal way and whatever things in, the farm, in this area, he gave, he gave them a same dating, right? But that's not true, right? Even that much soil, the formation of that much soil needs thousands of years. So that is uh, kind of the problem that he did. Then a new technique was happened later on. A new technique and a new technique of excavation. Right? Now in 1944, R.E.M. Wheeler became a director general of Archaeology Survey of India and he rectified and he know that the problem of uh, this uh, uniform you know, excavation of horizontal way, horizontal way. So what he did, he asked all the archaeologists to follow the technique of said graphic excavation. Understood? So his picture, his picture was there, right? So is an RMB. So he asked to follow the stratigraphy of the mount rather than uniform horizontal line of excavation. So he rectified the problem of what was done by John Marshall. So he asked all the archaeologists to follow stratigraphy of excavation. Right? Got it? But unfortunately, what happened in 1947, because of this, you know, two nation theories and many, you know, Hindu Muslim rights, uh, uh, because of that, India got partitioned in 1947. When the India got partitioned, what happened? The most of the Harappan side went to Pakistan. And most of that, during that time, there were almost like, you know, 40 big sites were there, Harappan 40. And most of them went to Pakistan. Now, Indian archaeologists were, you know, a bit much more, you know, uh, they get tense about what to do. So it, because of that, the, it encouraged Indian archaeologists to find more sites of Harappa in India. But, so these encourage Indian archaeologists to find Harappa sites in India because most of the Mohenjo-Daro, this Johan-Daro, uh, then Lothar, not Lothar, I'm sorry, then they, uh, Harappa all went in Pakistan. Right? And finally, what happened? Indian archaeology found many sites in India after the 1947. See, Kali Bangar uh, in Rajasthan, Lothal in uh, Gujarat, then Raki Gari in uh, Haryana, and then Dhola Vira in Gujarat. These are the very big cities of Harappan culture. See, if you look in the map, look it over here. See, Raki Gari here, right, in Haryana, right? And then we have Kali Bangar in Rajasthan. Kali Bangar in Rajasthan. Then we have Dola Vira in Gujarat, then we have Lothal in Gujarat. These are the you know, big uh, uh, Harappan site found in India after the partition of India. Understood? So, then and since 1980s, right, and the growing of international interest in Harappan archaeology. Now, so, uh, another country, they, they got some kind of interest in interspecies civilization. So they also, you know, uh, start coming to in India to look after the Pakistan now and after the 47, 47 we call it Pakistan right? they came to Pakistan and uh, uh, do more study on interspecies civilization right? through that way specialized 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 from specialized from abroad have jointly worked at Harappa and Mohenjo-daro to find more information so specialized means very you know this um, educated or what we say very expert in the, uh, doing this kind of excavation, those people uh, from different uh, different country came to India and they began to study about interspecies civilization. And uh, not only that, still there was a study going on interspecies civilization about the scripts, about the weight. Still there is a, a study is going on. There. If you find in the net, you will find different kind of research that still doing by the different kind of people in the world. So that is all about the discovery of interspecies civilization. Uh, point number 11 and the last topic of our the first for our first chapter interspecies civilization that is problem of piecing together the past 
problem of piecing together the past means to combining the different kind of sources, right? Uh, just like uh, we have this jigsaw puzzle, right? uh, when we put all the jigsaw puzzle together, at the end we get a desirable shape or desirable what you want kind of shape that you, need, that you get. Just like when we collect all kind of these resources, right, sources, then finally we have some kind of information. But in the case of a Harappan civilization, the script has not that much role to play in giving information about industrial civilization. Because you know, archaeology has not able to read the script, right, not able to decipher the script. So that, that's why script is not that much important when it comes to the giving information about industrial civilization. So now, uh, other than script, the materials of industrial civilization, different kind of you know, these raw materials, different kind of clays, ornament, and different kind of artifacts, they give more important than uh, information than C or script. Right? So through that way, they be pieced together the past. See now here, we know that material evidence means material means uh, different kind of these artifacts right, of Harappan allow archaeologists to better reconstruction means to give more important uh, sources of Harappan civilization than Harappan script as we know right, just uh, materials like uh, this jewelries of different kind of beads right. And then we have pottery, then we have many other you know, weights are there, the seals were there, and many other uh, the materials. Through that way, uh, we piece together the, the past. Inside this topic, we are going to discuss about classifying the finds. When we get different kind of raw materials, like we get these seals, we get these you know, bones, we get this pot, right? So what we need to do, we need to classify the find according to their use or according to uh, what they are made of, right? So here, how they classify? They classify in a two point. First, one simple way of classifying or separation, separating of artifacts in terms of materials. What kind of material they made of, right? So first, such as stone. Is this made of stone? Is, is this made of clay? Is this made of bones or is it ivory or metals? Through that way, they uh, classify the finds, different kind of artifact. And the second thing they classify according to the use, right? Second, more complicated, it's more little bit more complicated. Why? Because see, in the terms of function, for instance, an artifact is a tool or an ornament. Now that's quite a confusion, right? So through that way, they classify the find. Sometimes both, sometimes mean for the ritual use also. So through that way, archaeology try to classify the finds. Right? Is it made up of what? First, then second, according to its function, right? Then is there any kind of you know or this uh, religious importance on this uh, find? So through that way, what archaeology did, archaeology classified the finds, what they get, understood? Okay. Uh, then uh, last topic that we are going to discuss about is problem of interpretation. When we say interpretation, interpretation means to explanation, right? Giving explanation, reason, right? Now. When it comes to the uh, explanation about the religion, Harappan have lots of problems. No? It is most, I would say it is most difficult to explain about the religion of religion practice of interspecies civilization. Now see, first, in attempt to reconstruct religion practice, archaeologists has most problem of interpretation. <coughs> Sorry. Now, why? Because archaeologists, what archaeologists do usually? Archaeologists thought that object which seems unusual, whenever they see object which is unusual and if they don't have that much idea about that, then what they do or un un unfamiliar. So what they do, may they consider it must have a religion importance. Just like uh, we in, in industrial civilization, right, in what they found, we found uh, mother goddess. That is in your uh, textbook, right, this picture is in your textbook. Mother goddess, see, look at, look at this picture. Uh, she uh, she looks like you know, uh, heavily you know she wear heavily jeweled and see different kind of you know this uh, to, by looking at this right Harappa think that oh these are different right? I got looking at the other things it, these statues look a little bit different so they think she must be a goddess right? used to you know pray by the people followed by the people 
Or the other thing we found, pre-skin, as we have discussed before, right? Is this a pre-skin? Because it looked different, right, as compared to others. So they, so they think, is this a pre-skin? pre the, their work is to pre uh, preach, right? Teach the um, religion, right? So they are not exactly sure whether this is pre-skin or this is a mother goddess or different. They are not sure. But, because why they say it? Because they have not that much information about those things. So they assume that like, it must contain a religious, you know, something to do with religious things. So through that way, uh, they interpret it through that way. Because and third, what they do, uh, when they found you know, many kind of you know, these uh, things, like see, structures, structures have been assigned ritual significant. They, when they found the fire altars, uh, fire altars, means, you can see over here, right? fire altars. Nowadays, uh, in Hindu religion practice, they use this, right? Now, here what happened, um, to reconstruct the religion practice or any kind of history, sometimes what historians do, they, you know, move from known to unknown source. Just like, you know, nowadays, uh, people use this fire altar to do religious practice, right? So, the archaeologists think that by looking at the present, they move to the past. So, they think that this, when they found this kind of, you know, fire altars in Kali, Bangar, and Lothar, they think that, oh, that must be uh, uh, something to do with religion practice. Because we know, present day, we use this as a, use this in a religion practice, yes? And then, also the great bath in Mohenjo-Daro is not sure whether it is uh, something to do with religion or what. But archaeology think archaeology call it relig uh, ritual bath, right? But they don't have that much information about it. The last, they also found uh, this uh, seal contain uh, this uh, yo yo seal seal contain uh, this you know the person seated seat, one one person seated in, in a cross leg with a yogic position. Right? So they think it must be a pashupati, lot of animal. So. They consider it must be a Pashupati and they also give you know this name as the there must be a Shiva, form of Shiva. Right? Uh, the one of the major deity of uh, uh, this in Hinduism, right? Shiva. So they think there must be a Shiva, but they don't have exactly this evidence about is it is Shiva or something else. Uh, on that uh, in Harappan culture, they found small, small in this cone shape, like you know, nowadays linga. So they, they, the archaeology interpret is this a linga that they used to wear by the in, uh, Shiva followers or is this a chess game that they used to play by the uh, Indusvili people. So when it comes to the interpretation of religion practice, archaeologists have so many problems. Understood? So this is all about the religion, uh, interpretation of religion practice. Inter interpretation, when it comes to the interpretation of religion, archaeologists have lots of problems. And then, it is the end of the our chapter. Now here, what I want to say is, uh, we have discussed about many things in this chapter, right? About the town planning and many things. Still, there are many more things to do, you know, research. Just uh, to first, the most important, decipher the script. Then second, as I told you right now, uh, is there any kind of gender difference or a social difference? Or this uh, uh, great bath, uh, is a ritual or what? For that, uh, your work is to do study and find the solution of it. If you want to become uh, this historian, then uh, this is the one way to do the study and find the solution for it. And then, uh, till then, uh, thank you and stay tuned and we will see you in the next video.